Hello, AP Biology students. This is going to be our sixth section of the pre-content in Unit 0. And in this section, we're going to talk about something called standard error of the mean. To start out this section, I like to show my students this bar graph. Usually during the first week of school, we test some product, whether it be like toilet paper or soap. And to graph their data, my students usually produce a bar graph that looks like this. And I ask them, how confident are you that brand B is the best? I try to actually put a dollar value, like how much are you willing to spend that B is the best? I ask, are you willing to bet $5, $10, $100, $1,000? And we typically get various answers. I then say, this is the actual data. Each one of these dots along the bar graph represents one data point of that set of data. And the bar graphs represent the averages of that data. Side note, I did just make and pl randomly place these points along the bar graph. But then I asked my students, how confident are you now that brand B is the best? And their answers usually change. They go, well, I'm not that confident anymore. Then I show them this graph and I say, okay, what if this was the data? How confident are you now? And the students usually probably like, oh yeah, I'm a lot more confident. I'd bet a lot more money. Then I go back to this graph and say, well, you're showing me this graph. How do I know what the data behind these averages actually tells me? Or in other words, how do I know if I'm looking at this graph or this graph when I'm just looking at the averages? And I think it helps them click like, oh yeah, these are incomplete graphs. I need something else to show where the data is. And that's where standard error of the mean comes in. This is a measure of how a sample average is going to represent the actual population's mean. So basically we have this data for the whole population, but we can't logistically take data from the whole population. So we take a sample from just a random sampling and how does that represent the total population? That is what standard error measures. After we calculate standard error of the mean, we use something called error bars to represent this value. These are called error bars and they go above and below where the average sits for a bar graph. And these error bars or bar headed lines represent the variability or the variation in the data. Remember how before we talked about within group variation and between group variation. These error bars are going to help us represent that within and between group variation. So this is why we talked about variation and standard deviation before we got to these things called standard error bars. Now, before I go on, I just want to remind everyone that this is for a high school level AP biology class. There is a lot that goes into error bars, standard error of the mean, standard deviation, and just statistics in general. And it can get really difficult to understand all of these attributes, but what I'm trying to focus on for this section is just what you need to know for an AP bio class. When comparing two sets of data, you can see the bar graphs here. If these error bars overlap, the data is not significant. How I like to explain this to students is that these error bars show the variation within the average for that set of data. In other words, if we took this average again, it could be between anywhere between these two points. Let's say tomorrow we come in and we run the same exact test. That test could show me an average here or an average here. Same for this set of data. If we do the test tomorrow, the average could be all the way down here and all the way up here. This is just because there is a lot of variation in that data. So let's say on one day the average comes up to here and the average goes up to here. That looks like data set B is actually larger than data set A. But on the next day, the average could be here for A and down here for B, which makes it look like A is going to be larger than B. That just shows there's a lot of variation in the data and it's not significant to say that A is larger than B. When error bars don't overlap, that means the data is significant. So again, you can see there is no overlapping between data set A and data set B. So no matter when we do this average, you can see that this average is always going to be higher than this average. But those are the two main concepts students need to understand is when there's no overlap, the data is significant. And when there's overlap, the data is not significant. So the next question is, how do we graph these error bars? Well, we graph something called two standard errors of the mean or SEMs. So again, you can see we have our bar graph with an average. What's gonna happen is we're gonna make an error bar going in the positive direction and an error bar going in the negative direction. So you can see our margins of error, one goes in the positive, one goes in the negative, and we graph two of them. So you can see there are two standard errors going in the positive direction and two standard errors going in the negative direction. Now you might ask, why do we do two standard errors? For biology and specifically in AP biology class, we go for something called a 95% confidence interval. And if you remember back to our standard deviation section, that's because two standard errors of the mean give us a 95% confidence rating. 
Now, again, there's a lot more that goes into this. If you are interested, I implore you to take an AP stat class, but just basically we're just graphing two standard deviations with us two, two standard errors. Now, when looking at these error bars, you might have noticed that some of the error bars are very large while some are very small. Smaller error bars indicate more significant data generally. This is usually due to two reasons. One is they have a large data sample size and two, there's small variation in the data. Larger error bars, on the other hand, indicate less significant data generally. This could be due to two reasons or both of these reasons. They had small data sample sizes or large variation in their data. Now, the last thing we have to understand with standard error is how to calculate it. To calculate standard error of the mean, all you have to do is take the standard deviation, which we've already calculated, and divide it by the square root of n, or the number of data points. Again, this is a lot easier when you actually show a problem, something to give you in a practice problem. Remember our practice problem from before. We had data points 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Our standard deviation was 1.58. The number of data points is 5. And our average was 3. So all we have to do is plug in the numbers. We take the standard deviation and divide it by the square root of n, which is 5. And if we plug those numbers in, we're going to calculate that the standard error of the mean is 0 0.7. And yes, it's that easy. It's just plugging in two numbers and figuring out the standard error. Now remember, when we graph this standard error of the mean, we have to graph two of them in the positive direction and two of them in the negative direction. So again, we have our data, our average is 3, you can see that we graphed it here, and our standard error of the mean is 0 0.7. So what we're going to do is we're going to go up 0.7 and go up another 0.7. We're going to make our bar headed line and we're going to do the same for the negative direction. We're going to go down 0.7 and down another 0.7 and put our bar headed line. That's going to show us the standard error of the mean for this data. You can see that we have a bar headed line in the positive direction of 1.4 and a bar headed line in the negative direction of 1.7. And that's all you have to do to graph standard error of the mean. It's important to understand, though, that each data set, each average, is going to have a different standard error of the mean. So if I was graphing another bar graph, it wouldn't have the same standard of the mean. It's going to have a different standard error based on its data.